Hey everybody, welcome to another Fishing Reminder video. In this episode, we want to do a review of our Aquamarina Aircat fishing boat. First, we have a look at the setup. What is an inflatable catamaran? Then we have a look at the build quality and the price. And then we have a look at the performance. How does it perform with the included oars? Does it row good? We use a six horsepower motor. We show you how it performs with that motor with one or two of us on board. And then we want to show you a couple of modifications we made, especially for fishing, to make this boat more suitable for fishing. Then we're just going to give you a quick summary of the pros and cons of this boat. By the way guys, we purchased this boat with our own money. This is not a sponsored review or anything like this. We just give you our complete honest opinion of this boat. So we're transporting the boat on our ute. I find that quite easy to transport it on the back of our load rack. And that's all the boat is basically. Two packages of the boat. All right, guys, so this is what you basically get when you purchase this boat. You get the main package, which contains the boat. This here is the inflatable drop stitch bottom that inflates like a, a pedal board, basically, and you've got a nice hard bottom. Then you get paddles. You get a pump with it, a dual action pump, same pump as Aquamarina delivers with the pedal boards. And you also get a seat. Okay, Hagen, are you ready? Then start the timer now. Okay, let's set up the boat quickly. Holy cow, that's dirty. This is the boat rolled out now. As you can see, we have used the boat already quite a bit, so it's still a little bit dirty from our previous trips. The first thing you want to do with the included pump here, throw it away. And then get yourself one of those electric pedal board pumps. You need a pedal board pump because you want to pump up this boat to a high pressure, to 15 psi. So this here is the uh, Shark 2 electric pump made by Outdoor Masters. If you're interested in getting one of those pumps, check out our previous video. I link it up here. Now guys, this pump operates on 12 volt, so you need to plug it into your car cigarette lighter outlet and turn on the car while you pump up the boat. The inflation valves that are being used on this board are the same as on pedal boards. It's just a standard pedal board adapter. So this boat comes with four air chambers. It's got one in the front, uh, one in the back on each side. And then we got, of course, our inflatable hard bottom, which is also another air chamber in that case. The side pontoons, they're inflated to 3.6 PSI, pretty hard. Drop stitch bottom is inflated to 15 PSI, same like a pedal board. Now you cannot inflate the boat completely in one go. First you have to inflate the side pontoons on each side a little bit, maybe half. Then you put the hull in, inflate that fully, and then you inflate the side pontoons fully as well. Otherwise, the bottom will not fit in this boat if you start by inflating the side pontoons fully. So we have only partly inflated the uh, left side now. Are we going to partly inflate that side as well? I love how simple that is with the electric pump. Just push the button and wait. So now that we have the side pontoons inflated, partially we've got the structure of this boat set up and now we can inflate the hard bottom to 15 psi. We have to fiddle around a little bit to get this bottom lined up properly. Uh, quite often in the end here by the transom, there's always a little bit of a gap and it's really hard to get the bottom sit perfectly straight to the transom here. After a while I've given up, I just leave it as it is and it doesn't seem to affect the boat's performance. Make sure the hull is properly seated in there. Okay, we're done Asian. What is Good. the time? Okay guys, setting the boat up for the very first time it took us 25 minutes. For that reason that it takes so long to inflate those little boats, I will always keep it inflated and transport it and just slide it off the ute and have it always ready to go. Otherwise it becomes a hassle and who likes hassle when you want to go fishing. 
All right, guys, the next thing we want to do, we're going to fit the seat onto the boat. Usually when you do this, you want to have those pontoons a little bit deflated. That makes it easier. I forgot about it. But you can also get it in there once it's inflated. Those are the straps for the seat. You just slide one end in to get the other end in after the boat's fully inflated. You just have to pull and push with your knees against that pontoon, and then you will be able to fit it in fairly easy. Oh yeah, the seat is seated. Now this is how you attach the paddles to the inflatable boat. And I don't really like the system so much. I would have preferred a fast clip system rather than having to screw them on because you know, it's metal, metal causes corrosion. When you roll it up, metal can damage your pontoons. When you don't use the paddle, you got this clip, which is a bit hard to get the paddle in here. So you have to push quite hard. And this is how you attach the paddle. Let's have a look at some of the features of this boat now and what makes it unique. Why is it a catamaran? So this is what the boat looks like from underneath. Being a catamaran, only those side pontoons will be gliding through the water while the hull will be up higher than the water line. Because of this design, the boat creates much less drag in the water than having a traditional V-shaped hull. You can get away with a smaller engine to achieve the same speed and the same planing with this boat. So the boat has some rubber protection all along the bottom here when you scrape it over shells or the beach. It also has some side protections when you land with a boat on a dock. It also has some bumpers here in the front. If you bump into something forward, you get some nice protectors here. And you got the same protectors in the back as well. Some nice hard plastic protectors here. One thing that I always really like about Aquamarina is the design. They just make really good looking boats and paddleboard. The Aquamarina Aircat is no exception. It just looks really nice in my opinion. As you can see, we only got two D-rings on this boat, one on each side, and it comes with a rope attached to these D-rings, which you can use to attach your anchor to or to just pull the boat around. Or when someone is sitting on the boat, they can use this line to hold themselves on this line and give them some steadiness. Besides that, as you have seen, we got the seat here already, which you can either set up in the front of the boat or you have another setup here further in the back, depending if you only use the boat by yourself or if you have a second person. You also got some handles here on each side, so they're quite good. So these handles are very good when you transport the boat. Two people, one can grab those handles and then you can easily take it to the water. Okay guys, let's have a look at the transom. So we just got a plywood transom here. It's glued on, pretty much standard for those inflatable boats. It's got a bit of a plastic protection here for where you attach your outboard motor. One-way drain valve here on the bottom, so the water can go out, but it doesn't come back at the end. But we still have a plug that we can plug in from the outside. So Aquamarina recommends that you only unplug this drain plug here when you're actually motoring along because the front of the boat will come up and then the water that might have come in here will drain out while you motor. When you're stationary, when you're anchoring up for fishing, they recommend to leave that plug in here, but I never plug it in really. I just always leave it open. The material of this boat is PVC. You cannot, as far as I know, get this boat in Hyperlon, which is a bit more of a sturdy material that they often use in inflatable boats these days, but it seems pretty sturdy and it is also easier to take care of and longer lasting. So the boat itself is not welded, like the accessories that are on here, they're not welded on. They're all glued on. And what I found that after a few times inflating the boat, you can see the glue lines along those uh, patches here. Yellow glue lines everywhere. I'm not so sure if that's normal. That's the first inflatable boat I ever had. I hope this will not come off at some stage. On the transom of this boat, we got two holes, one on each side. I have no idea what they're for. If you guys know what these holes are for, then please leave us a comment down in the comments below. I'd be really interested to learn what those holes might be for. The drop stitch bottom of this boat is pretty good. It holds up very sturdy in the water, but we already had a little bit of a problem after one month's usage. Drop stitch bottom has a little leak on it. There's a little bit of air coming out. It's not huge, but after a week or so being inflated, 
the bottom loses air and we figured out that there's some air bubbling out on the side of the seam. So another thing we noticed with the build quality is that lots of the threads where that is soon on, lots of the threads there are visible and uh, they don't seem to be uh, properly stitched or properly glued. So that's another quality issue we've seen here. Okay, so let's have a quick look at how the boat performs in the water. So the rowing of the boat is surprisingly easy. I would have thought it a bit harder, although it can be difficult to find a comfortable rowing position, especially if you have two adults sitting on board. You're gonna to have to adjust the seat a little bit, backwards or forwards, and get to these uh, oars. Now, if you're interested in buying a boat like this, then of course you're looking for a portable option. And for a portable option, you also need a portable motor, right? Uh, the reason I wanted to get a six horsepower motor and not a 10 horsepower motor is because it's just so much lighter and easier to transport. I actually transport it in the back of the ute. It only weighs 22 kilos, so that is a big plus if you're traveling around and you want to carry this motor around in and out of the car, setting up the boat frequently. You don't want to be lugging around a 50 kg motor you can attach up to 9.8 horsepower of an engine. That's what it's rated for because it's an air cat and you don't need so much power to get on a plane. We can both of us get on a plane if it's not too windy and choppy. So a six horsepower engine is enough for the two of us. One thing when you purchase a motor for this boat, you gotta be aware of, you gotta have to buy a short shaft motor. If I'm by myself, if I wanna get the boat on a plane with my motor, I have to move my weight forward quite a bit on the boat so that I can push the boat down forward. In that case, I have trouble reaching the uh, tiller of the, mo of the motor itself. So I have to stretch myself out quite a bit until I get onto a plane. So maybe it's worthwhile to get a tiller extension for your motor in that case, so you can sit further forward on the boat. So the top speed I've reached with my six horsepower motor by myself was about 25 kilometers per hour. Me and my wife are planing together. We reached about 20 kilometers per hour planing speed. So that's pretty good for a six horsepower engine and an inflatable boat. One problem I have found with a motor is that um, the short shaft motor, even though it requires a short shaft motor, it sits a tiny little bit high in the water. So you have to experiment with tilling the motor quite a bit, especially if you have two adults on the boat to avoid the ventilation or cavitation of the boat, which can be a bit of a problem. I think the transom of this boat is just a little bit too high for what it should be. Uh, guys, if you're interested in this motor that we're using, the Suzuki 6 horsepower motor, and you would like to see a review on this particular motor, then leave us a comment down below. I'm happy to make a review about this and show that in a bit more detail to you guys as well and uh, give you my recommendations if it's a good motor or not. Most people wonder about is can you actually stay dry on this boat because it's got an open bow. We have not found any problems to be honest because the boat comes up once you give it a bit of gas even shock or wave are not a problem and if some water gets into the boat it will just run out back through the drain valve. You stay pretty dry on this boat you don't get wet. All right, so in this next part, I want to have a look at uh, some of the modifications I've done to the boat to make it more suitable for fishing, to make it easier to launch and those kind of things. The boat, as it comes out of the box, is pretty bare. It is usable straight away, of course, but you can make your life much easier by adding those few modifications that I'm going to show you now. So the first thing I really like are those rail blazer star ports. You can easily attach those star ports to the seat, for example. Also, you can get side ports that you can attach to the transom and you can even glue on side port onto the pontoons themselves. Although I didn't have much um, success with gluing them on, to be honest. I tried with the included VHB tape patches that they come with and they just didn't stick. So I just resorted to screwing some onto the seat and someone to the transom. They work really good for attaching rod holders or phone holders or other accessories from Railblazer. They have a real cool variety of items uh, for this particular purpose. And then you can get some accessories like for example those Railblazer rod holders. You can attach them to these star ports.
these things are invaluable, of course, if you want to use this boat for fishing. You need some rod holders. If you don't have rod holders when you want to go fishing, life is pretty hard. These were really sturdy as well. You can use them for trolling lures or for just transporting your rod to when you go to your fishing spot. Really, really good. And the position of those ones here at the transom is also very good. And if I go with my partner here, I added one of those here at the front. So you can attach a rod holder here as well. So that's a really good add-on for this boat. And I highly re recommend getting those if you want to set up this boat for fishing. So guys, the next addition that we made to this boat, which I find invaluable, are wheels. And those are also made by Railblazer, those wheels. They are the biggest I could find. First, I bought just some normal dinghy wheels. They're really cheap. You can buy them from marine shops with the small wheels on them. And I found them completely useless because of the transom being so high up, you have absolutely no ground clearance installing those. So Railblazer makes these really cool wheels. They are strong as and big as. To attach them, you have to drill into your transom again. And they come with those kind of brackets. You can see the screws coming out here. I had to get some smaller screws because the screws that were included, they were slightly too long for the thickness of this transom. The beauty of those wheels is you can leave them on when you're motoring out there. You don't have to uh, take them on and off the whole time. When you roll up the boat, you can take those wheels off easily. You don't have to leave them there on there. They come with this little clip to attach the wheels to the brackets. Now this part can be a little bit fiddly. Okay, there we go. There we go. It comes with a little clip to make sure they're in there. And now we got our wheels. What I found the easiest way to use the boat instead of trying to drag it with the wheels is you push it. So you can just lift it up in the front and then you can push it to the boat ramp or to the beach. And it works really good with the motor attached as well. Okay, and here's how you move the uh, wheels up when you're in the water. So they have different settings on to where you want the wheel. You don't really want to have it sticking out like this. You either want to have it on the bottom or on the top. And then you've got a little uh, lever here on the side. Uh, change that over so it won't slide out anymore. Do the same thing with the other wheel. Here you go. How good is that? The beauty with the wheels that I've been using here, those Railblazer wheels, because they're so big and high up, I can actually set up the motor onto the boat here on, on dry land uh, without the motor hitting the ground. Having the motor attached to the boat with the wheels being so high up, I can just, when I want to flush the motor, I can just put a bucket with water underneath the motor, have the motor run in this bucket of water for a little while, and I don't need another stand or anything for the motor to be able to flush it. I can do it all on the transom. You still have tons of space for your outboard motor sitting here. It won't interfere with those wheels, and the wheels won't be in the water either. That is super easy. That's the best addition you can possibly make to this boat to make it easy to launch and to land especially if you're on your own and you don't have anyone to help you transport the boat. And yeah, you don't need a trailer. If you're a motorboat, no hassle of trailer. All right, so let's sum it up a little bit. Uh, what are the pros and cons of this boat? Obviously, the biggest pro of this boat is price. Compared to other inflatable air kits, this is the cheapest option you can get. If you buy a tacker kit or a true kit inflatable boat, they cost almost three times as much as this boat. Now, of course, they also have much better build quality. They have more D-rings. You can get them in BVC or Hypalon. For me, I kind of like value for money. So I think this is pretty good value for money. But this boat doesn't feel very cheap when you use it. It feels uh, very sturdy. It feels pretty thick. So you're pretty safe from fishing hooks and stuff like that, getting into the material. Pros of these uh, inflatable boats in general are, of course, that they are super lightweight, that you can transport them easily in the back of your car. You can move them around easily once they're inflated. You can launch them anywhere you want, really. The con of this boat, of course, is build quality, really. But, you know, those are all little issues that we can live with. Lots of the things we can fix ourselves, we can just 
put a little bit of extra PVC glue on it to stop the leaking here. So far I had two more Aquamarina products to pedal board. Both of them were leaking, but that seems to be a common issue with uh, Aquamarina. I hope you enjoyed this video and got something out of it. If you want to purchase a boat like this for yourself, we had a lot of fun with this boat already on lakes and also inshore fishing. It has provided us with the ability to get out there. Okay, so if you're interested also in other Aquamarina products, like for example our Aquamarina Drift fishing paddle board, then check out this video up here. Asians got the big ones again. Yeah. <laughs>